welcome back to the coast of North Cornwall. Where we're searching for a home with Claire, Peter and their three children who want to feel like they're on holiday 365 days a year. Can they turn this dream into reality? So far we've shown our couple a spacious family home with a separate holiday cottage but not the style thereafter. A house with a pool, a caravan and sea views to die for and a good-looking 1930s house that sounded promising. But it's too small for us. Uh, but it has the vibes. It's got the vibes. <laughs> An early start to day two, and a house just moments from the beach near the picturesque village of St Morgan. It's got stables and impressive views down to the sea, but it's a touch above budget. The vendor's asking for offers over £265,000. Right, now coming straight in hmm. to the most important room in the house. Lovely kitchen. Kitchen, you've got the kitchen. stove there to warm your bum. Lovely. In position already. <laughs> Is it a big enough kitchen for family eating? Definitely, yeah. Absolutely. Very, yeah. very important to be able to sit and eat in the kitchen. We've spent half our life in there, really. Cool. We're yeah. scoring points this morning, Kirsty. Yep. OK. Yeah. Good so far. Well done. Peter, I want to show you a couple of things okay. this way. As we see it, you've got two options here, depending how much work you wanted to get involved in yourself, but either you could um, have horses at livery, you could make about £200 a week off that, but it would involve you feeding them and mucking them out and generally looking after them. Claire would enjoy that. If she didn't want to get quite so involved, you could let the stabling and paddock for about £30 a week. Are you into horses? Um, I'm not. Claire is. I've been on a horse once and it threw me and broke my wrist. So Don't go there no. again. Up here we have the master bedroom suite. Ooh, a suite. Which is rather grand. Now wow, this is a is huge grand. room. Isn't it? Again, the fantastic view. Lovely, lovely. I think lovely. you could have an armchair or even yeah. a chaise long in that corner. It's really a room where you could do a lot more than just, just sleep. sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go look at the bath. I don't yet feel as though we've got to the bottom of how much income it is you're looking for, Peter. I mean, £200 a week. It would involve quite a bit of work, but that's, that's healthy income. That is, that's a fair amount of money. Mm, yeah, £200 a week. I don't like horses that much. You could get six in there, couldn't you? <laughs> you could get into horses for £200 a week. <laughs> Through here, you've got fantastic ensuite bathroom. You're great, very luxurious. And then a little room for Dot. Well, she's only a little girl, isn't she? She's only a little girl. Now, I think you should make the garage into a playroom. An excellent idea, yeah. And that would mean that she'd only really be sleeping in there. And the other thing, of course, is this caravan. It's seen better days, but mm -hmm. um, a new one, what did that cost you? Yeah, well, we looked into it, and I think for a, a static, sort of 1,500, 2,000 pounds, you get a nice full berth static. Nowadays. And rental so, income on that high season? Um, it's got to be four, five hundred 500 pounds a week. Yeah, well, that would be. If you've got six people in it? Yeah, exactly, especially if they ride. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it all worked out, this man. The, the council don't like giving permission for, for new statics, but because there's one here, mm -hmm. a new one could take its place, no one, no one would mind. Well, he really pricked his ears up at that, didn't he? It sounds like the Cockwell did as well. And I'm not surprised, it's a fantastic house, much bigger than anything we saw yesterday, good income generators, and the view, they just don't get much better than that. The only thing is, we haven't told them how much it is yet. So wouldn't you love that to be yours? Kirsty, I'd be very happy. You two happy. still drinking up the atmosphere. You're thinking yeah. about the drinks we're going to have <laughs> on a sunny evening on this terrace, back from the beach, a few glasses of wine overlooking our own paddock down there. Sounds it's like heaven. you've already moved in. Mm, I think I could. It's on the market at 265,000, which is, you know, really, really stretching it. Mm. Yeah. Big beans on toast <laughs> for the next five years. <laughs> yeah. To sum up, what we're saying is we like the house. Yeah, we like the house. Yeah. We like it very much. It's all sounding extremely positive. But before Claire and Peter make up their mind, they've asked us to take a look at a house they saw a while ago that they just couldn't quite let go of. It's an imposing Victorian villa on the market at 275,000. It's got seven bedrooms, so plenty of space for renting out rooms. The property is currently used as a care home. So this is one of the two rooms that you were telling us about. Yeah, two big sitting rooms. It's very similar to the house that we sold, and uh, I love the high ceilings. Now, there's a lot to do, but the upside of the care home, 
element is that the electrics, the plumbing and the heating are going to be really up to date, reliable, because they would have had to be regularly checked. So what about this, Kirsty? What do you think of in here? Again, great high ceilings. I think because of it being a care home, it's a very dull kitchen because yeah. it's for... Oh my, look at that! I didn't look notice that. that when I first came in. That is huge. That's my dream cooker. That is a proper cast iron range. Think of the stews I'm going to make in there. Now, what's, all, what's going on here? Well, they've covered the top up, but the lady who owns the house assures me she has the plates and the lids upstairs and it could be restored very easily. This is going to be very, very interesting. It's a big commitment here. It's going to be hard to compare something like this with some of the more regular opportunities that we've been looking at. They could spend a lot of money here, but they, they could make a lot of money too. Now, the ceiling height's dropped a bit, but that's not surprising because at the very top of the house here, under the eaves. What was your plan for this space? Um, well, we were thinking we could separate it off from the main house some way and then um, rent it out. Because uh -huh. we'd need to get some other access. That is where you would access it. If you could get a staircase coming up the side of that house, that would be your front door, it would be great. It's just whether you'd get the planning permission. And as they've done it on the house next door, I think that's set a precedent and you wouldn't have a problem. But downstairs, Phil's spotted a potential worry. Whoa. Oh no, what have you seen now? Ugh. That's... It's crumbling away. Crumbling away. Oh, we don't like that. Um, that's quite a serious issue. It, th there'll be lots and lots to do here. Mm. Make no bounds about that. Mm. But it could be a very exciting project. Mm. Sounds like this renovation could equal aggravation. It's a gorgeous house, though. I love it. It could be absolutely fantastic. But could not we ever for, finish it? Yeah, not for six months to a year. That's optimistic. Working as opposed to being down the beach. Mm. No way you're going to do it in a year. Mm. It's going to be longer and harder. Well, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> it's not going to work. My <laughs> dream's not going to work. Well, we need to go home and think because it's all too, it's been a long day, it's all too much now. So, we've seen what you can get for a quarter of a million in Cornwall. But what about elsewhere in the country? A converted church with five bedrooms near Inverness. A two bedroom cottage in South London. Or a three bed house in a former school near Newcastle. So it's our final day. Let's see if Peter and Claire will commit to Cornwall. Well, what we're dying to know is, uh, was last night's property the dream home? Not the last one, no. It started no? being a dream, and then I thought overnight turned into a bit of a nightmare, actually. How do you want us to progress from here? Well, I think the only one we really like to see again is the one at St Morgan. So it's back to the house with the stunning sea views. It's near to the pretty village of St Morgan. Peter and Claire want to make sure it's got everything they need. First stop, the local school. Got the prospectus, Pete. And, awesome. lucky, the headmistress is in there, who seems really, really lovely. It's crucial to take the time to really investigate the area you're buying in. Splashing through the Ford. That's going to be dumped in a few years' time. So full marks for the village. What about the house? Well, how does it feel to be back, huh? Well, Phil feels really rather nice. Yeah, nice and bright, homely. It's lovely and it's really, it's so light in here. Could all five of you comfortably sit in here entertaining yourselves? Easily. I think so. Very easily, yeah, plenty of room. So, sitting room, thumbs up? Definite thumbs yeah. up, yeah, right. it's lovely. Claire, if you were to buy the house, how do you think you'd use this room? Well, I'd want to bring this back into the house and probably use it as a playroom. We checked with the planning authority to see what they'd have to say about that. Because it's attached to the house, they don't have a problem with it. Good, good. You would need building regulations approval. My first plan, and probably the more expensive plan, would be to lose this, wall it up and put a nice big window in it. Yeah. You'd like to insulate the walls, get some heating in here, maybe some double glazing. Mm -hmm. That might be a long-term plan, Phil. What's the cheap option? The cheaper option would be to um, rubber paint the floor mm -hmm. and Box this in with plywood. Easy. A couple of storage radiators, yeah. keep the kids quiet. Cheap sofa and you're away. For Claire and Peter, the number one attraction of this property is this view. It's fantastic. But what would happen if a local farmer decided to supplement his income with a static caravan park? It would look very different. When you purchase a property, your solicitor conducts a local authority search. This means he checks for upcoming planning applications. If you're buying a property for the view, you've got to check that's safeguarded. Yeah, no, it's good. Dining room's good. 
Yeah, lovely. I like this room as well. It's a lovely kitchen. The cooker's nice. I can uh, see you in here, darling, washing up, cleaning up about a little bit. Claire likes this. We're going well. Fingers crossed, I think we may have a result. But in the ever unpredictable world of property, even the best laid plans. We've reconvened at the village pub with Peter and Claire. Now, as we were leaving the house, the vendor came back and we've discovered something that uh, they're not going to be pleased about. When I spoke to the vendor, she said, had you heard that there was another offer? And I said, no, I hadn't heard that there was another offer. Can you give me any indication of what level it was at? She said, you know, the offer is at uh, 280,000, which obviously I don't came... like it anyway. <laughs> Well, let it, let it stand. I mean, they'll, they'll go 280 and then well, if they don't have another offer, they'll the go, thing right, is, 270 because there's some complaint and it'll come down and it'll be... My like, view, if you, you know, if you did want it, yeah. call their bluff <laughs> and say, look, fine, we love it, but we don't think it's worth yeah. anything like that. Peter and Claire have the full amount in cash and are ready to move quickly. To most vendors, that's an attractive proposition. Our advice is that they should stick to their guns and offer what the house is worth to them. I have to say, I think you're moving to the right place because you clearly have the Cornish attitude to life. <laughs> this is the most laid-back attitude to disappointment I have ever come across. We're on Cornish time now. You're on Cornish time and you've developed the attitude before you found the home. <laughs> it's brilliant. But before Peter and Claire could take our advice, the higher offer was accepted. However, they did eventually find their Cornish dream. It's a healthy 35 grand under budget, with all the space they need. They plan to invest the extra cash in a second property to rent to holiday makers. Obviously we were disappointed to lose that house, but uh, luckily we found another one that's really got everything we wanted. So we put an offer in and um, that's been provisionally accepted, so, so hopefully... Yeah, we're looking forward to moving in, settling in, having a different new life in Cornwall. <laughs>